If you always read what you're told to, you're going to become what you're told to. The same as everyone else. Ordinary, mediocre and bored. If you're part of this community here on Motivation to Study, then you know the power of taking things into your own hands. Taking your education, your self-development and your learning into your own hands so that you can open your potential up to be limitless. The following list is not for you if you want to stay comfortable and follow what everyone else is reading or doing. Most self-improvement lists like this, what I found is they only feature authors from one set of stories, voices and backgrounds. But you already know, you already know that you expect to see voices like David Goggins, Jay Shetty, Tony Robbins and so on in these videos. Now these books written by these incredible people are amazing but when you only hear from one set of cultures and experiences, you're missing out on new ways of looking at things. If you want to open up your life and your mind, you need to open up what you consume and what you learn from. Assess the landscape around you and assess the landscape inside you. And that's what this list is designed to do. If you want to open up your mind, you've got to try and draw from as many sources as possible. So the five must read books in this list, they're not what you expect, but they might just, they might just be what you need. And the five books I'm going to recommend to you are Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race, The Good Immigrant, Atomic Habits, Six Pillars of Self-Esteem and Daring Greatly. What you should do is use these books that I'm recommending as a starting point. This is not a complete list and it's not meant to be. It's not a top five list. It's a list designed to stimulate your ability to think for yourself about the world around you and the world inside you and how the two interact so that you can decide for yourself how you want to shape both. So let's start with a book that you wouldn't necessarily expect. A book that has over 40,000 reviews on Goodreads and across these countless reviews, it's got an average rating of 4.42 out of 5. And it's called Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race. But what does motivation, mindset and self-improvement have to do with a book like this? What if you're not interested in politics and you just came here for motivation? Well, to quote words from the book directly, not seeing race does little to deconstruct racist structures or materially improve the conditions which people of colour are subjected to daily. In order to dismantle unjust racist structures, we must see race. We must see who benefits from their race, who is disproportionately impacted by negative stereotypes about their race, and to who power and privilege is bestowed upon, whether they've earned it or not, because of their race, their class, and their gender. Seeing race is essential to changing the system. The mess we are living in is a deliberate one. If it was created by people, it can be dismantled by people. And it can be rebuilt in a way that serves all people rather than a selfish, hoarding few. Every voice raised against racism chips away at its power, and we cannot afford to stay silent. You can't heal what you continue to deny. And I include this book because it gave me the profound realization that there's no such thing as not being political or being neutral. Politics is something that affects all of our lives. And it's not something that happens only in the hallways of power, but it's something that we are a part of and that we as people should drive. And I suggest this book to you to help you think for yourself. Believe nothing that I tell you or even the author of this book tells you, but so that you make up your own mind. How does this relate to your own self-improvement? As you're reading, think about that. How does this relate to my mindset? Part of having what is known as a growth mindset is about learning and drawing from all sources, taking what is useful, discarding what isn't, and adding your own unique perspective on things. And this book is a brilliant starting point. There are two structures that affect you and your life, the internal world and the external world. 
Understanding both is key to helping you navigate towards the best possible you and the best possible world that you want to create. Book number two is another bestseller, read now by over a million people around the world since it came out just two years ago. It's practical, to the point, and evidence-based. It's about making tiny changes that can leave huge waves of change in your life. And it's called Atomic Habits by James Clear. In this book, again with a rating of almost four and a half stars across almost 100,000 reviews, James Clear shares his proven framework to improving every single day. If you're having trouble changing your habits, the problem probably isn't you. The problem is your system. And I like this idea because it relieves the pressure on you and it places it on your process. Bad habits repeat themselves again and again, not because you don't want to change, but because you have the wrong system for change. You don't rise to the level of goals or motivation you have. You fail to the level of your systems. And here in this book, you'll get a proven system to take you to new heights, to learn how you can make time for new habits, even when life gets crazy, to overcome a lack of motivation and willpower, to design environments that make success easier so you can get back on track when you fall off course. So this is a book that's gonna help you to reshape how you think about progress and success and give you the tools and the strategies that you need in a very practical way to transform your habits, whether you wanna quit smoking, lose weight, reduce stress, or achieve any type of goal. And as James Clear says in the book, every action that you take is a vote for the type of person that you want to become. There's not a single instance that's going to transform your beliefs, but as the votes build up, so does the evidence for your new identity. So if you want to be extraordinary, it's boiling it down to the most smallest common denominator, the smallest possible action you can take. And it's these tiny habits that create massive waves of transformation. Book number three is Six Pillars of Self-Esteem by Nathaniel Brandon. This is a book that I've recommended time and time again to anyone that wants to be more confident and more purposeful in life. It's essential reading for any of you who are interested in personal or professional development, especially when it comes to self-confidence and self-esteem. The book demonstrates really compellingly why self-esteem is basic to psychological health, achievement, personal happiness, and positive relationships. And it talks about the six pillars, six action-based practices for daily living that provide the foundation for self-esteem. And it explores the central importance of self-esteem in five areas, the workplace, parenting, education, psychotherapy, and our culture at large. It shows us why in today's chaotic and competitive world, self-esteem is fundamental to our personal and professional power. Of all the judgments that we pass on ourselves in life, none of them is as important as the one that we pass on ourselves. And is it the type of judgment that we want? If self-esteem is something we wanna improve, it's not something you have or don't have, but it's a practice. And when we say practice, it means a discipline of acting in a certain way over and over again, consistently. It's not action by fits and starts or even an appropriate response to a crisis. Rather, it's an appropriate and operating way of being day to day in big issues and small. A way of behaving that is a way of being. And if you combine these ideas with the ideas you're gonna get in Atomic Habits, you're really going to be onto a profound level of change in your life. The next book is Daring Greatly by Dr. Brene Brown. And again, this book has got over 100,000 reviews and it's still got a four and a half out of five rating on Goodreads, so you know you're on the right track. Researcher and thought leader, Dr. Brené Brown, she offers a powerful new vision that encourages you to dare greatly, to embrace being vulnerable and imperfect, to live wholeheartedly, and to courageously engage in your best life. Her work is defined by a quote from Theodore Roosevelt, who said, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred 
by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. Every day we experience the uncertainty, risks and emotional exposure that define what it means to be vulnerable or to dare greatly. And that's what this book is going to help you to master. Whether the arena you're in is a new relationship, an important meeting, a deadline, an assignment, an exam, you have to find the courage to walk with vulnerability and engage with your full heart. And this book is going to help you with that. Based on 12 years of research, Brené Brown argues that vulnerability is not a weakness, but your clearest path to courage and meaningful connection. And as she says so eloquently in the book, connection is why we're here. It is what gives purpose and meaning to our lives. The power that connection holds in our lives was confirmed when the concern about connection emerged as the fear of disconnection, the fear that something we have done or failed to do, something about who we are or where we come from has made us unlovable and unworthy of connection. Daring Greatly is not a book that will probably help everyone personally, but it will help everyone relate to some people in their lives who maybe can't stay out of their own way or their own head. Maybe it's the person who has so much potential but scared to try. Maybe it's a person who completely crumples under criticism. And this book is not about being weak or permissive, but it's about daring to be you, the real you, the real you that not everyone is able to see. It's about daring yourself to be uncomfortable, to define boundaries for yourself, to envision something outside of what society or culture thinks is cool, because we are hardwired to connect with others. And it's what gives our lives meaning and purpose. And speaking of purpose and connection with others, this final book in this list is not one you've heard of probably, but it's one you need to read. It's a collection of essays, ideas, and articles that will help you to think differently from a lens and a voice you won't otherwise get. Finding the blind spot and filling it. It's about learning to accept ourselves, especially when we might feel othered or like we don't belong. Have you ever felt like that before? What does it mean to fit in? How do we fit in? And is it something we want? Is it something we're able to do that the structures around us allow us to do? And what is it like for the people who really don't feel that they fit in for one reason or another? And this book is The Good Immigrant by Nikesh Shukla, a collection of writing from 21 different people about their stories and ideas on what it means to belong to different cultures and to try to fit in. As one writer in the book says, to be an immigrant, good or bad, is about straddling two homes whilst knowing you don't really belong to either. What I found this book helped me to see is what it's like to grow up as part of the Chinese community or the black community or the Gujarati community or the Pakistani community in the UK. The small day-to-day -day experiences that I wouldn't ever think about or get to see but have been written down and shared for me to understand. So I can consider how can I be a better leader? How can I be a better friend to the various people that I interact with? Self-improvement, it begins with you, but it's fulfilled in community. We don't live separate lives. We live interconnected lives. Our mindsets are that of trying to be champions, of already being champions, but we seek to improve ourselves. We want to acknowledge and not deny the external agencies that influence our thinking as well. And this book helps you to think about that on a day-to-day -day basis. How can we free our own minds and identities so that we're thinking for ourselves, not because of the environment and society around us? And if that's not self-improvement, then what is? So I hope you enjoyed this video. My name's Keshav, and I wanted to make this as refreshing, different, and some food for thought as possible on your quest to being a remarkable student, but also a remarkable and open-minded person and thinker. It's the mark of an intelligent mind that you can entertain unique and divergent ideas without necessarily adopting them. And that's what I wanted to do here. If we always learn from the same set of books and people, we limit ourselves and our thinking. And I personally want to continue learning from as many sources and as many ideas as I can, so I can grow to be as magnificent and open-minded as I can. 
But what do you think? Tell me in the comments below. And listening to this video is one thing, but taking action is another. We're not about theory here. We're about being active participants in our journeys. So if you want to accept the lowest level of change, post a comment with the book that you're going to read in the comments below. And if you want to go expert mode challenge, then go read all five of these, take notes and share them with me on Instagram at, at GeshevBX. And if you want to learn more about how to find your unique purpose and calling in life and live the most meaningful life that you can based on your best self, I've created a free 45 minute training just for you which takes you through the six major causes of unfulfillment in life so that you can avoid them. And it's based on the latest science and psychology right now. The link is down in the description. Go check it out. And until then, stay well, my friends. I'll talk to you next time. Peace.